Welcome to Kicking with Bobby Joe. If you are new to my channel, my name is Chastity and welcome to my small kitchen in Chattanooga, Tennessee. For those that didn't know, Bobby Joe is my dog. Bobby Joe helps out in the kitchen when we make doggy treats and doggy birthday cakes. Her fourth birthday is April 15th, so she'll be joining me in the kitchen to make her favorite treat in a few weeks. Today, she isn't in the kitchen with me since we are making human food. I was invited to join Marching In with Casseroles 2023 collaboration hosted by Greg at Greg's Kitchen. Go check out his channel and also watch his video for information on how you can win a $100 Amazon gift card by watching videos in this collaboration. And don't forget to check out all the other channels participating in this collaboration. Links to all the channels are in my video description. Being from the South, I thought I had tried every kind of casserole invented, but after watching some of these videos being posted in this collaboration, I realized I haven't tried them all yet. Today, I'm going to be making a recipe from one of my keto cookbooks. This is called Chicken Cordon Bleu Casserole. I wanted to make something low carb that I can enjoy because I'm always cooking stuff for everyone else that I'm not supposed to be eating. So today, I'm going to be able to actually eat it. So let's get started. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. This week I boiled a large pot of chicken and I boil it until it falls off the bone. I shred it and I use it in recipes throughout the week. So this is what's left of that chicken and this is a mixture of white and dark meat. The recipe says five cups of shredded chicken. This may be a little more but I don't think you can have too much of this juicy chicken. This sliced ham is from the deli. I just cut it into strips with my kitchen scissors. I don't think I'm going to need all of this ham. What I don't use, I will use in omelets and wraps throughout the week. You're also going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. And over here in my mini cast iron skillet, I have a half a cup of melted butter. The recipe calls for six ounces of Swiss cheese, but I prefer provolone cheese. So that's what we got. Also have six ounces of cream cheese. And we're going to need the juice of one lemon. One tablespoon of white wine vinegar. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I'm going to be making this in my Lodge cast iron casserole pan. I love cooking in cast iron and I got this pan last year at the Lodge factory store when we went to the National Cornbread Festival and it was 50% off so I was very happy to get such a good deal on it. So to start with you want to line the bottom of the pan with chicken. The great thing about casseroles is they're easy to make and you can make them ahead of time. You can freeze them before or after you make them and they can feed a crowd. All right, next we're going to add some ham strips over the chicken. All right, there we have it. In a mixer, I'm going to pour the melted butter, the cream cheese, the white wine vinegar, mustard, all right, so let me get my lemon squeezed. <laughs> so this is going to make a paste that goes over the top of the ham and chicken. Leave me a comment below letting me know where you're from and what is your favorite casserole. My favorite is chicken and dressing casserole. Oh, that's my very favorite, but I can't really have it anymore. When my grandma was alive, we would go down to a little place in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia called Park Place Restaurant, and they had the best chicken and dressing. It was a Wednesday special. They had the best everything, though. That little place, they knew how to cook. It was one of those little southern cooking places. It was just so good. My grandma would get the fried chicken livers, everything on the menu, and she wanted those chicken livers. <laughs> okay, my lemon is juiced. You want to add in the lemon juice and the salt and mix it all together until it's smooth. Okay, it looks a little too thick, so I'm going to add two tablespoons of chicken broth to smooth it out a little. That looks about right. Oh, 
Okay, now all you have to do is spoon it over the meat and carefully spread it, which can be a little difficult with those ham slices. I don't like my casserole coming out of the oven all messy, so I take a paper towel and wipe down the edges where the paste got on the pan. You don't have to do that. I just do it because I like my casserole to come out looking perfect. Okay, next you want to add the cheese. And I'm cutting these slices in half so they'll fit around the edges. All right, it's ready to go in the oven. You want to place it in the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. I cook it until the cheese starts to brown a little because I like my cheese to look toasted. But you cook it to your liking. We'll be back in 40 minutes. Okay, y'all, my house smells so good. Look at that. Doesn't that look drool worthy? I'm going to let it cool down for about five minutes. Casseroles are easier to dip after they cool down a few minutes. Okay, those that are new to my channel, my husband, Steve, does my food reviews. So let's go see what Steve thinks about this. I take it it's good. Very good. Draw worthy. That's all we're getting out of you? No. I had a bite that was mainly just chicken. I had a bite that was ham and chicken. Then I had a bite that was ham, chicken, and topping. And the topping, really, really good. You can taste the cream cheese, you can taste the ham, you can taste the chicken, you can taste the cheese. The Dijon mustard? A little bit. White wine? Vinegar? Do what? White wine vinegar? I guess. I don't know what. what Do you what? taste any lemon? Is it juicy? It's, it's not dry. It does have a good moistness to it but yeah it's really good I like it think your mom would like some my mom would I'm not sure about my dad because it does have a good flavor to it because <laughs> we've got a whole casserole in there and we're not going to be able to eat the whole thing yeah, call her and ask her I can take some over tomorrow so Steve's mom loved it too, and this is a great casserole even if you aren't on a low-carb diet. It lasted us a few days, and we really didn't get tired of it, even as leftovers. I think it tasted even more flavorful the next day. Well, thanks so much for stopping by and watching. Don't forget to check out the other channels in this collaboration this month. Thank you, Craig, for inviting me to this collaboration. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more do-it-yourself projects, bird videos, gardening, and drool-worthy doggy and human treats. Y'all have a very blessed day.